Yeah, we spent all this time on the track bar trying to like make it so you can just do one nice weld like down the whole thing. I started going like an inch and a half into it. I ran out of wire and so then you had to like restart and you totally fell. <laughs> Ruin! All right, we're gonna get you caught up on where we are with our 392 build. There was a lot of welding that went on in the last week. Front ends all welded up, painted. We moved on to the rear, got a bunch of work done back there. So now that the front end's pretty settled, we jumped straight to the back. We got a lot of work to do back there. So on the other side of this thing, uh, one of the big things that we had to get through was the fuel system. Obviously routing it safely. We're gonna have a lot of heat. This is a whole skid that's gonna go under here with mufflers. So there's gonna be a lot of heat trapped in there. We got a lot of the uh, heat reflectant wrap. So all our fuel lines up here, all our transfer case cables, there's some wiring back here that's all covered in that. So all that is housing the fuel lines that are coming back to our new Generate fuel cell. So this is all plumbed up and finalized. We had to do some, some brackets here for the, uh, for the EVAP stuff. There's another EVAP canister that's up in that corner that was a total bear to get to fit right, but it's in. Uh, the fuel tank is in 100%. That thing's ready to get some fresh 91 poured into it. And really under here, it's just, we cleaned it up as much as we could. That way there's not a whole bunch going on. It's simple as far as if you ever had to have a trail repair, um, you know, uh, the Genrite fuel tank has an access panel that you can actually get to the fuel pump from inside the cab of the vehicle, which is actually super, super cool. Um, I've never had to replace a fuel pump, but it doesn't sound fun to drop your whole tank. So <laughs> that's where we're at under here. We'll move on to some of the finer details in the front of the Jeep. So in the next part of the video, you're gonna see me doing some welding in this general vicinity. We have the shock towers welded in, painted. We also got our inner fenders to fit with the new shock towers, with the reservoirs, with the bumps, all that good stuff. So there was some clearancing we had to do here. So on the front end, we had to make some clearance for our reservoirs. These are obviously gigantic. They have dual adjusters on them, dual hoses. So these hoses actually got shortened and the panel here for the inner fender had to get trimmed up. We're probably gonna trim it up a little bit more to give it a little more clearance for the hoses. Um, and also be able to get to the quick adjusters, so for tuning purposes. And obviously these towers are huge, so we had to trim more of that for that. So it's coming together, it's all nicely painted, ready to go. We'll have to do limit strap tabs somewhere here too. That's not here yet. Uh, we're getting there. How's it look? I'm all right with it. It looks great. I like. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we spent all this time on the track bar trying to like make it so you can just do one nice weld like down the whole thing. I started going like an inch and a half into it. I ran out of wire and so then you had to like restart and you could probably tell. <laughs>
Okay, so we're finally working on the back. I have a cross member in. These are our new revised versions of the upper arm brackets. So they kind of cope around the frame here, um, opposed to just being on the side of the frame. So that's good, they're nice and beefy. I have had the axle in here. As you can see, I have Sharpie marks all up here. That's where the tower is gonna go. We have tons of clearance with the fuel tank back here, which is good. Um, so that kind of gave me my area of where I'm gonna be able to cut the towers out. The 40 does tuck into here really well. So we're basically gonna be able to use every bit of 14 inch coilovers that we have. And bumps will end up here-ish. Um, I was saying last time that we were waiting on a truss. I ended up making a mock truss if you want to take a look at that. So this was just like kind of a bolt-in idea. They actually sell one for this, but uh, Don at RPM was like, eh, I'd rather not have you guys have that. We'll give you a big weld on truss. And then um, this bracket right here will end up going on it. So for now, I just got all the measurements of where this pretty much needs to go and we made it work. So that way I could at least cycle the rear and then I basically just have to match where this bracket is on the truss when it goes on. So that's temporary. It's fine, it's doing its purpose. We have our other link mounts here. Now, once I get the towers cut in, I'll be able to put the shock mounts on. Then we can start figuring out sway bars and all that good stuff. Full bump, full droop, limit straps, you name it. So whole interior is out of it. I just have some cardboard in there blocking it from getting all splattered so it's kind of a, a fun part of cutting into a 392. It's choppy choppy there's time. no going back now <laughs> have you seen that thing it's like how you need to stand when you operate or lift and it's like cross your leg over yeah. put your hand on your hip it so is, and every time I, now that I saw that, I'm like, every time I do that, I don't even have any choice of how, just the way it is. I had the, I had the axle up, like full bump, just to see how much room I had and kind of where the lower tab was gonna end up. And from the pictures I saw on his website, it actually looked like this was supposed to be like an inch and a half forward. But then the way the lower mount was, it was gonna kick everything kind of goofy. And so I basically had to go back as far as I could. So I kind of went back as far as the fuel tank, a little bit in front of the fuel tank here. And that's where we're going to start the tower. That way we have as much room as we can, um, especially since we're fitting a 3.0. This thing kind of has to be like dead on, I'm assuming. So <laughs> we're trying to get it on the first try. Peekaboo! Come on. There we go. Wow. <laughs> not on fire. All right, time to do the other side. We did finally get that truss so we can get it in and weld it up, as you can see Russo doing right here. Next step is going to be to get that thing painted and ready to go. We also got shock towers in the rear welded up, as well as the upper link mounts. I also wanted to mention while we're looking underneath the vehicle right here that we did get that cross member powder coated. We had them leave the ends bare so that we could get a nice weld on there and then paint it ourselves. That turned out to be a pretty good idea. We also went ahead and powder coated the belly pan black, a nice gloss black. We all know that's not gonna stay perfect for very long, especially not with the way that these customers drive. These guys wheel the shit out of this thing, which is really cool. I think. A lot of people might build something like this and then be afraid to go, you know, get a scratch on it and take it out and get down and dirty with it. Not these guys. I guarantee they're going to come pick this thing up when we're done and probably head straight to Johnson Valley. So we'll see how long the, the nice powder coat on that belly pan lasts, but it looks good for now. So that's pretty much going to do it for this week's episode of our 392 ADS shocks, RPM steering, 3.0 coilover build. That's a mouthful. You'll have to keep watching to see what we've got in store for next week's episode. We're definitely getting close. Things are starting to get exciting. 
I think we're not too far away. We've probably only got maybe an episode or two left until we are ready to start wrapping this thing up. If you have any questions at all about this whole journey and build that we got going on, please leave them in the comments down below. We'd love to have a conversation with you guys about some of the choices that we decided to make and why we did them, why we're doing things in a certain order, things like that. There's a lot of conversation to be had about this as it is a newer thing that hasn't really been done before to our knowledge. So go ahead and leave those comments down below. There's a lot of conversation to be had that we just can't fit all into one video. So we'll talk to you about it in the comments. Either way, thanks for watching. And we really appreciate it. Like I said before, we're just a small family owned shop here in San Diego. So having you guys watching our channel and leaving a like, leaving a comment is super helpful to us and helps us create more cool videos like this one. So with all that being said, see you in the next one.